Paul's second epistle to Timothy is a little bit more personal. Paul is disclosing a lot about his own life, his own ministry as a servant of God. And he is instructing another young man how to be a servant of God. How do you live as a man of God? So in chapter 2 verse 1, he tells Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. God is the source of grace. God has bestowed his grace on you and me. In fact, the Bible talks about it as, as God has lavished us with grace. What you have heard from me, Timothy, I want you to pass it on to somebody else or some others so that they in turn can pass it on to more people. A multiplication that is taking place. So the challenge for you and me is this. What are you and I doing with what God has put in our lives? Paul is trying to you know, guide Timothy as a, as a minister of God, as a servant of God. And he draws three analogies. First, that of the soldier. Second, that of the athlete. And third, that of the farmer. And using these analogies, he's trying to highlight certain characteristics that Timothy needs to maintain in his life to be a good minister of the Lord. You must endure hardship like a good soldier. A soldier is always ready for the call of duty. He may be taking care of his family or doing his responsibilities, but he's not so caught up in that that he cannot respond to the call of duty. So he says, no man who's, who fights gets so entangled with the affairs of this life. And then he says, an athlete... You know, an athlete may be highly trained, great athlete, but he's not going to win unless he competes according to the... And lastly, about the farmer, he says, look at the farmer. The farmer is hardworking, but it's a hardworking farmer who enjoys the fruit. So he's saying, Timothy, I'm not just telling you to do these things. Look at my life. I'm in prison, but I'm doing this for the sake of the gospel and for the salvation of souls. Timothy, this is our hope. That even if we die, we know we are going to live with him. If we endure hardship, we are going to reign. If we, even if we are faithless, we come to a point where our faith is low or even gone, our faithless, God still remains faithful. Tell the church, tell people. All of these things that I've told you. So, Timothy, this, this is a message not just for you. It's also for the people in the church. Tell them the same things. And also make sure you tell them not to waste their time arguing about words that don't profit anything. But instead, verse 15, what must you do, Timothy? He says, be diligent. That means you be focused. And this is an ongoing thing. Diligence is not a one-time thing. Diligence is an ongoing thing. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a work, work, worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the truth, the word of truth. If you want to be a vessel of honor, this opportunity is available for all of us. It's not for some select people. All of us can become vessels of honor. If we meet these requirements, what is he saying? Cleanse yourself. Second, set yourself apart for God. Third, be available. Fourth, be equipped and he'll use you. There will be people who oppose you. There will be people who oppose the gospel, who oppose Jesus Christ. But how should a servant of God handle this? He said, first of all, don't get into disputes and debates and arguments. Don't get into those things. The servant of the Lord must not get into strife. Understand that it is God who is going to move on them to bring them to a place of repentance and embracing the truth be a servant of the lord because he concludes this chapter by saying the servant of the lord must be like this so really all these instructions are applicable i just want to highlight one verse i think there are many things here which paul what paul writes to timothy verse 21 if anyone cleanses himself from the latter that meaning whatever is dishonorable he will be a vessel for honor he will be a vessel for honor he'll be sanctified he'll be set apart holy unto god He'll be available, useful to the master, and he'll be prepared, equipped for the master's use.